Welcome back, friends. Pyro Pam here. Yes, after setting a plant on fire and all of set, all your concern, thank you so much for it. But actually, the flame from my um, little stove, my little alcohol stove, is much further away from me than it looks. And I make sure there's a good circle around it where it's not going to melt anything. But what I had said about it last in one of my videos prior was that it uh, is used for camping and people um, use it, cook with, what have you, and that it can bring a pot of water to boil in 15 minutes. I'm gonna test it. This is a campfire um, percolator, coffee percolator, and I'm gonna put it on here and I'm gonna test to see how long it takes to boil. Now it's pretty full and it's cold water. I'm just gonna light my stove. I made sure I filled it up. Did it light? Nope, that time it didn't. Oh, there it went. Anyways, so I'm just gonna put it on here. This, like I said, rainwater, it's pretty cold, so it might take it a little longer, I don't know. But when you're camping, isn't that kind of what you use, or just cold water? So you notice how, let me see, I'm just making sure I set it on there well. Let me check it all the way around. Okay, yeah, it's on there. Okay, as long as I don't bump it, we're good. And it's got a good, a range around it so it, like my plants over there won't be harmed. I have my other my phone up there that's videoing as well so you have another angle. But let me see is it still going? Yeah. Cool. Let's see. Test it. And I am going to show you this thing. It's called I call it a toolbox caddy. Um, I made this. And I am no woodworker, um, but it's just a few simple pine boards and a closet pole. And this makes such a fun thing for so many uses. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to plant it up today, as well as I'm going to talk you through how I made it. I have pictures of, is it this one? It might be one of them I've made because I've made a couple of them, as well as just some plain wood boxes. So let's go and build us a display box, toolbox. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and or share with your friends. They might like to make one too. All right, building a toolbox caddy. Now on this one, I don't remember the size of the board and I, I do, I have a blog post and I have it where I take you step by step through it as well as have the pattern for this. Um, the pattern is for my subscribers to my blog post or to my blog. And so if you want it, um, it will require an email address. Anyways, um, yeah, this one, this was painted blue. You can see the paint has come off of it. Um, but I am liking just the wood look with just the scrappy bits of blue on it. This was really, really a pretty blue. And if you wanted to make it just a planter rather than I put, these are wet, these, taller pots in it and you see how it comes right to the top and when you have plants in it um, yeah I'm staying away from that I promise then um, the plants spilling over they hide the top of the pot and or you can add moss a decorative whatever let me see now th there's this gaps between these I'm wondering if I could Put another little one in there. Just let me test it. I have these smaller ones. I got these from Bootstrap Farmer. Is it called Bootstrap Farmer? Um, yeah, two of this would fit in there because not a, a fifth one of these will not fit, but two of these would. So if you had something that was really vigorous that would fit in these pots, that would work in there too. Now, um, I don't know if you can still buy plants in these sizes. These were from years ago. I have reused them for several years, probably 10. 10 years, and um, I've kept them. I just clean them up. These were scrubbed as well as sanitized so that any plants I put in them, which today will be pansies. Where do I have my pansies? They're here, I promise. Um, and then it will just be set somewhere. Now, if I wanted to use this as a planter box where you put the plants and the soil right in here, I would be sure and treat the wood. Either I would do a... Um, polyurethane, I would do something because it'll rot away faster. I Now this thing, I built this probably five years ago 
and it's been out in the weather and it's done fine, but I have had paint on it um, and it's just now peeled away. Um, yeah, you could stain it and polyurethane it. You could also do other things. You could do a duck stain on it. Um, just don't use food crops in it because I don't know how safe that is. I do have an organic tongue oil that I have used, I should say had, I haven't been able to find it recently, that I had got for my deck. And also I did my um, countertops. I have butcher block countertops. So, like I said, ooh, spider. Let me wipe him down. Now I'm not afraid of spiders, but I have been bitten. Um, so I don't let them hang around if they're there because I've done that before and then had them bite me on the neck and my neck swelled up. Yeah, not fun. Oh, I'll show you another one I built. See this one? This one is from fence boards. So you see the dog-eared part right here? So I didn't have to cut it. This I used a um, jigsaw to get the shape. You can also use a table saw, band saw. Big old spiders on this one too. But see this one fits three and um, the cedar of course will last much longer. And um, I have a mineral oil too that I can finish it with, let it soak it up. But there's that one too. Anyways, let me turn around and find, oh, there it is. So here are my petunias we're gonna put inside this. Into, we're gonna pot them up and then I'm gonna place them in here. Let me, can I move that over there? Yeah, I can move that over there. Is that in your way? Yeah, that's in your way. Let me set it down here. I actually have a good sized greenhouse. I just have such a mess in here. Yeah, that's going. So, how has your day been? I'm just gonna pot these up really quick. Um, I use gloves because my hands get all dried out. But yeah, it's been a day for me. It's been a day. <laughs> my dishwasher, you ever see those comedy shows where the washing machine or the dishwasher has suds coming out all the sides and underneath? That really does happen. <laughs> yeah, um, what I did was I had a painted, it's like it was an old olive oil um, jar and I had put a pour spout on it. <clears throat> Excuse me. I put a pour spout on it and um, I had had dish soap in it, you know, like this, you know, like Joy or Dawn or something like that. And it had been under the sink and I thought, oh, I should clean this up and use it again. I hadn't used it in a long time. And uh, so I put it in the dishwasher not thinking that, because it, it was empty, but the soap that had been in it had dried and therefore it was still in there, but very concentrated. So when I put it in the dishwasher, ran the dishwasher, that thing just started sudsing everywhere. Uh, an alarm went off on my phone and yeah, not yeah, not on my phone, but on the dishwasher. And yeah, the, my kitchen was, is now scrubbed clean because there was suds everywhere. So yeah, that was one of my, Latest little faux pas. Alrighty, all I'm doing is putting some potting soil in these tall pots. And I am, and I kind of pulled the roots loose because they were a little root bound. And um, they will just put down new roots. If you left them root bound, they just, they wouldn't go anywhere. And then the plant wouldn't thrive. So I've done this many times before. I even have a video on it. I did last year, I do believe. And then I show later the plants thriving everywhere. Now these things, see, look at the leaves are getting yellowed. They were struggling in there. So I probably should cut all the flowers off and I will. That way it can concentrate on put, putting roots down. Now, why can I do this in December? Well, this year, because it's been very warm. Now the last three days, this is the third day of it, we have been getting rain and we've gotten almost five inches, which is wonderful. And I'm thrilled because it's not snow, you know. Last year I had my fill of snow. So this year I am quite content with rain. And as long as it's not snowing, I'm okay with it not being sunny. And I know that um, in a few days, a couple of days, it's gonna get sunny again. So no big deal there. So this six pack I bought actually a couple of weeks ago and it's been sitting in here. Now one thing this time of year, because of lack of light and everything is not really growing uh, well, or just it's just kind of sitting there dormant and that's what these are doing. So it didn't really hurt it any um, that much, even though it's got some yellowing leaves. I should say, didn't hurt it much, right? Not that it didn't hurt it at all. 
So I do have some things I'm going to show you that I've been asked about in here. Um, just let me get this here, this one done. And I will set it over here and then I can clean up the foliage and the flowers. So anyways, one of the questions I've had was, what are these beautiful flowers? And what they really are? They're plastic. They're fake. I had got these um, after watching a television show and it seemed like everything was blooming and crazy and I looked up some information on how in the world they could have so many blooms like that all the time. Now this area I know doesn't uh, have a lot of sunny days like that. So anyways, it was because of plastic flowers. And I thought, well, I'll order some just to pop in here for some color. Um, I had all of the pinks in one vase and what have you. I even had some out in my garden for kind of fun. Um, those ones got faded, but these ones in here have done fine. But even the lavender, the fake lavender is pretty. They're kind of cobwebby, but so yeah, someone was asking me about those because they spotted them and they said they look so pretty. What were they? And they're plastic, but they are kind of fun when you're craving some color. I just keep them up on that shelf. I'm going to test this water. Wow. Yeah, it's already getting very warm. Is that thing going? Yep, still going. You can't see it. The flame is so pure. I don't know what you call it, but that it's not, you know, there's no color to it. So I have to look for the heat waves. So, okay. So that was one of the questions. Now, um, I am going to do, let me see if I have a big enough pot. I had made one of those terracotta heaters. I'm trying to see if I have the big enough terracotta pot. Um, you know where you put a small terracotta pot, then a larger pot over it, but inside the middle is a candle and you light it, and that's supposed to provide heat. Um, yeah, I tried it, and it didn't provide enough heat worth diddly. Not even to keep me warm in here while I'm in here. I had left it on overnight just to see if it would keep the temperature up in here a little bit warmer than outside, and it didn't do a thing. I probably, this is too big and it's got too many air gaps. I'm, maybe it would work if you had an insulated space or a smaller space, but it didn't work. It wasn't worth the space it took up. So I just have a, my little uh, dish heater here. Puts out a lot of heat when I'm out here and the rest of the time, everything fins for itself uh, during the winter. And a lot of times, even though some plants are more tender, like my geraniums, um, if they get the, enough light, they'll make it. Um, yeah, the primroses, they don't mind it cold. Look how beautiful they're doing. I just love primroses. Can you see the primroses over there? Yeah, you can. So there's another pansy down. So let me see, I only have four pots that will fit in there. So I'll do something different with the rest of these. Yeah, I have, um, in fact, the terracotta pot that I used for the heater uh, that didn't work. Well, it eventually cracked. Uh, I don't know if it was from the heat or what it was, but it cracked. And so then it split open and broke. And so I'm going to use it for a succulent planter. I'm going to show you that um, at another time. But I'm going to make a fun little planter with it. The little one, I have one that's on my blog. And it's on a page called... Um, when you have lemons, make lemonade or something like that. Uh, and it shows how I done a small one. But I think the larger one will be a, really a showpiece. And I'll find someplace special in the garden, maybe Secret Cottage Garden. And I have logs and I could set it up on the log so it would be kind of displayed pretty. Alrighty, there are my pansies. I bought all the same color. I like things when they're massed together in, um, a particular color scheme. I'm looking for my little broom thing. I had it here to sweep off this. Oh well. I know it's here and I'm just missing it. Let me see. Yep. Got the heat waves coming up. So what I'm going to do now, I can take these off, is I am going to nip off the, where's my little nippers? Nip off the blooms. It's the only thing about these glasses, they mess up my hair. Okay, nip off these faded blooms. 
and even ones coming up only because I want to put energy into creating more roots and they're getting almost a little leggy and you can trim them back. I am going to let them continue on just as they are for now and then I'm going to put them in my toolbox. Now what would be fun but I don't have any left would be the primroses in here because the primrose I don't have any in smaller pots I have them in the larger pots because um, they're just doing so gorgeous yeah so there we have that that one's just unfurling I don't have the heart to cut it off now I don't know if pansies are daylight sensitive and what I mean is some things just stop growing completely when the days are shorter than 12 hours um, and some things do better during, when the um, day length is shorter than is 12 hours or shorter and that's like cilantro and other things like that um, and that's why they can call some strawberries day neutral meaning they don't respond to the length of the days like others do so strawberries many times bloom not because of heat and et cetera, it's because of day length. So um, if you're wanting some that are supposed to bloom throughout the summer, you want day neutral. Um, and usually when they mean like that, or they're blooming continuously, they're not blooming as big a crops as if like a June bearing uh, strawberry, they, um, they, it's kind of more sporadic. So here is my container. And I was going to talk you through building this, didn't I? First of all, we had the board, and I cut it to size. And then I had a jigsaw, and I cut out the end shapes. And then we started nailing them together, all the boards. We had the bottom, and then the two sides, and then these. I, and probably in my blog post, I have how much wood it takes. And you can adjust the size. You can make this shorter. Um, I, I just wanted a nice size to fit several of these in. This one has a solid bottom, but you could also drill holes so you get more drainage. This one, there's gaps along the side, and so it does drain. So it doesn't hold water, or at least much, unless this swells. The wood could swell and then hold water, but um, I'm going to have this in here or in the DIY greenhouse. So I'm going to have to water my little things. So just imagine this full of blooms. Let me hold this behind it. So you imagine it full of blooms. And I'll show you pictures of ways I've staged this with different flowers. And I have even used it with jars, glass jars, and then put cut bouquets in it. And that works really well too. I've also used this in, at picnics at outdoor gatherings where I had containers that I had the knives, forks, and spoons in it, napkins, other utensils, so it was really easy to pick up and carry all of those this works it's really universal how this works and it's so easy to put together if you have any tools like that um, you could actually too if you don't have saws you could have the square cuts done at home depot or lowe's i think there's a charge like a dollar or so it could be more now um, per cut so that is another choice but usually you have a friend husband brother whatever that could have tools so and like I said this is just a wooden closet pole it makes a great handle but this one up here this one I just used a one by two and just cut it to length and that fits and it's just nailed on top and then yeah I'll probably stain this one or whitewash it and do the same with it so I think another thing is be really pretty in here, and I don't have any in here. I need to get some cuttings of my wire vine. I have wire vine, and I think that makes a really pretty airy spiller in things like this. Excuse me. Sometimes they get so dry. Alrighty, so that basically is my toolbox planter that I absolutely love. And I'll show you clips or pictures of the other boxes I've made and how I've used them. Um, I think they make really fun decor accents. I could not tell you how much this cost now. Um, like I said, I made this so long ago. And, you know, the fence boards, this was a pine or fir board. It was a one by, one by six. Yeah, one by six. Um, 
but the fence boards um, are much cheaper and they're cedar, cedar or redwood, and they'll last outdoors even better. Though this one has lasted great, so I can't complain. But um, the only thing with the cedar fence board is none, they're not uniform by any means. And therefore, it's just going to be a little more rustic. So I hope you enjoyed this short little video on making a cute little planter box. And I'll show you some decor things from making. I have, uh, I've, made, I've made window boxes and set them up as little mini miniature gardens. And we'll do one of those one of these days. Uh, I'll make sure to take you along when I set up my next miniature garden in a little DIY window box. That should be a lot of fun. I may take a week off. So if I'm gone for Christmas week, the week of Christmas, um, that's why. I am determined to clean out Primrose Cottage. It's been a disaster and I've not just focused on it. And I think that's what it's gonna take for me to get it cleaned out. And then it's gonna be so much fun because I have a new chair for it. I have some ideas for setting it up where it's much better utilized than it is right now. So check back. If I decide I have time to make videos, I will be here next week. But if not, you'll know where I'm at. And I'll put a message in my community tab too. So now um, I'm gonna get into some winter sewing. I'm gonna do some experiments. So I'll take you along on that. But if you wanna check back on last year's winter sewing, go on ahead and I will link them in the description box below especially the one about the mistakes. I see some common mistakes people make with winter sewing, and one of the main ones is they don't use cold, hardy annuals and perennials. They try to winter sew the ones that are cold sensitive, like cosmos and zinnias and whatever. Those are real sketchy. You have to wait to do those. Wait that until later in spring when it's not so sketchy. So, oh, wait a minute, we have to check in on my my little heater thing. Let me see, Do it, dare I put my hand in that water? Well, I know this was longer than 15 minutes, and it's hot, but not where I can't stick my finger in it. Um, so, but it was icy cold water. So that is, let me see, feel it, feel it the, it's not boiling, but I'll continue to time it and I'll, update you on how long it took, but it's pretty nifty. It's pretty warm for how long it has been there. Alrighty, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.